As we're finishing up this topic of work and energy, it's good to take a few minutes and talk about power. To get into this, let's take a step back and look at the kinds of problems that we solved in this chapter, and in particular, the kinds of things that we didn't do in this chapter. We solved a lot of problems like this. Suppose we have a roller coaster, and it's going to go down some curvy track around a loop, and maybe back up and do whatever it's going to do. And we were told things like, this roller coaster starts from rest, it slides down this frictionless track, and maybe we wanted to find how fast it was moving at the top of this loop. Or we would have a problem like some ball going down a bumpy track, and at the end maybe it gets shot up into the air. So if it's moving at some speed here, the question might say, if it shoots vertically up off of this track, what's the maximum height it's going to go to? That kind of thing. We solved a lot of problems in this chapter that would have been at least very difficult and maybe just not possible at all to solve only with Newton's laws. This really gives us a whole new tool, a whole new way to solve mechanics problems. It's often more insightful and very often easier than a straightforward application of Newton's laws. But there are two things that we have sort of tacitly dropped along the way. Two things that we've stopped keeping track of in this chapter. One is the direction that the object's moving in. We have in this chapter focused on speeds, and that's because this chapter was built around the work kinetic energy theorem, which tells me add up all the work on an object, and it changes the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is half mv squared deals with speed, not velocity. So in these kind of problems, car going around some roller coaster track or bumping down some path and going straight up in the air, there's nothing in our equations that tell us about the direction the object is going in. This is all about speeds. That's okay, because in all of these problems, there has been some track or something to guide the motion of the object. And we can see from the context what direction the object's going in. So if my equations tell me the speed, I can look at a picture of the system and see what direction it's going to be going in so we can get the velocity information back. But one thing that we stopped keeping track of in this chapter was the direction of velocity. And that's really what opened the door to all of the nice solutions we were able to do and the good insights that we got. But there was another thing that we stopped tracking and that's time. Nowhere in this chapter, I think, did we encounter a problem that said something like, here's a ball at the top, and it's going to slide down some path. Maybe we know how long this path is. We know what the radius of this loop is. How long does it take to get to the top of the loop? Or how long does it take to go from the bottom of this thing all the way back around to the bottom again? We didn't do that. Nowhere in this chapter did they ask us, if this is going at some speed v, how long does it take to get up to its highest point? This chapter was all about speeds, energies, and forces. Time has more or less disappeared from this chapter. That's kind of interesting. We bring time back in here at the end a bit through two definitions. They both have to do with power, but I'm going to define for you what's called average power and then instantaneous power. The definition of average power is the work that is done by some force divided by how long it takes that force to do the work. So if you have a force that is depositing or taking out mechanical energy from a system and you want to know the power, what you do is you take the work that's done and you divide it by how long it took that thing to deliver that energy or take that energy out. So the idea now is that if you are depositing a certain amount of energy or taking out through work, if you do that energy transfer in a very short amount of time, then the energy changes very rapidly. The power is very high. If you do a certain amount of work in a small amount of time, 
it requires a lot of power. Power gives you a measure of how much energy or work is done per second or per unit time. In the SI units, work is measured in joules, time is in seconds, so power is measured in joules per second, which we call a watt. Energy per unit time. Our light bulbs are often characterized in terms of how many watts they are, and that tells us how many joules of energy per second the light bulb consumes. If you have an expression for how the work or energy varies with time, then you can calculate the instantaneous power, and that is just the energy that's delivered or taken out in an infinitesimal amount of time. It's the time derivative of the energy. It's dW dt. So if you know what the work or the energy being delivered or taken out is as a function of time, and you take its derivative, that tells you the power. The instantaneous power is the rate at which energy is being deposited or taken out of a system. There's one useful way to rewrite this expression. The work, remember, is the integral of f dot ds. I can rewrite the numerator of this expression, this dw, as just the integrand. The differential work is the differential contribution to this integral, and that's just the integrand. So I can write this as f dot ds and divide it by dt. And now if I group these two things together, those are the velocity. ds dt, where s is a vector there, is the object's velocity. So if we have an object, there's a force acting on it, and it's moving at some velocity, the power that's being delivered, the energy per second being delivered to it by that force, is given by f dot v. That power can be positive when the force is in the same direction as the velocity. We're depositing energy into the object. It can be negative if the force and the velocity are in opposite directions, or it can be zero when they're perpendicular. These are the main equations we need for this last section. Average power is the work done over some finite time, and the instantaneous power is the time derivative of the work. It can be written as force dotted into velocity. Before we leave this and look at an example or two, there's one nice application to give us a bit of insight into this equation. In particular, why is there a velocity v here? That's maybe a bit unexpected. Uh, here's a nice way to see why that velocity term shows up. Next time you go to a playground and there are kids swinging on swings, maybe your little brother or your kid or your cousin or whoever is going to swing on a swing, try this experiment. It's pretty fun. Here's a swing. Let's draw the swing here. Here's a seat and there's a kid sitting in it holding on. Your job as the adult is to keep the child entertained by standing back here and pushing on this swing. So there you are. You're going to push and keep this thing swinging. What you want to do is push on it so that the swing gets a little higher and higher every time and the kid has fun as they're swinging. Try this experiment. Try pushing with a constant force, so a force of so many newtons, and push for a certain amount of time, maybe a quarter of a second. So push with some number of newtons for a quarter of a second and observe how much farther the swing goes up on the other side. So maybe it would have swung to here. After your push, it swings that much farther. So you do some amount of work in some amount of time. That's the energy per second you're delivering to the swing. And that energy shows up as an increase in potential energy as the swing goes higher and higher on the opposite side. Okay, and then do this. Move not to the end where the child is stopped and about to go back the other way, but move to the beginning. And make your push when the child is right here moving fast. So there they are now, right? And now they're moving with some velocity v. 
and they're moving fast, and try to exert that same force for the same amount of time. So maybe you're going to exert a force of two newtons for a quarter of a second. Do that same thing in both places. And notice, if you do it here, how much farther the child swings up. It's a pretty amazing thing. If you stand back here, you don't make much of a difference in what happens over here. But if you push on them with the same force for the same amount of time, when they're going through this center point where they're moving fast with a large velocity, they go way higher up in the air. Pretty interesting to experiment with and watch. A fun thing to do when you're on the playground, entertaining kids. Now, why is it that the swing goes so much higher when you're standing here pushing them in the middle? Well, on the face of it, it's because this velocity V term is there. And the larger the velocity, the more effective your force is at delivering energy. The more energy you deliver per second. But that velocity V term is there because of the fact that the work that you're doing, if you come back to this equation, the work that you're doing is proportional to how far the object moves as the force is acting on it. When you're standing behind the child here, the child doesn't move very far as you push on them. They're almost at rest. They're moving a little towards you and then a little away from you, and they don't move very much while you push. So you don't do very much work. You don't deposit very much energy into this system. And over some amount of time, your power is going to be very low because the work is low. On the other hand, if you push on them down here, your hand has to follow along with the swing as it's moving fast through this middle point. And the swing travels a large distance as you're pushing on it here. And so you do a lot of work and the power is high. And in a certain amount of time, you add much more energy into the system. So why is this velocity V term here? It's because the work that you do is proportional to the distance the object travels. And if the force acts on something moving fast, in a certain amount of time, it's going to cover a lot of distance as it moves. And that makes the work high, which brings the power high also. All right, let me stop there and we'll do some examples.